So here's the challenge. Make a game using only power apps. Like, you know, a real game that you can play. Now I don't hold any illusions that it's going to be possible to build something that holds up to today's modern games. But what if I tried to take on the granddaddy of all video games? Yup, I'm going to try and build Space Invaders folks using nothing but power apps. So it's just after 9.30 on Tuesday morning, and I have to admit right now I'm thinking I'm a little crazy for believing that this is actually going to work, and that I'll be able to create something that will even resemble the original Space Invaders game. It's at this point that I decide that even if I can just prove the concept, and then hand it over to the community, I will class this endeavour as a success. Well done mate, set the bar lower before we've even started. That said, let's fire up Power Apps and start working on the problem. First off, I've got to think about running a game engine on a platform that is definitely not designed for developing games. Is this even going to work? Is this just going to break Power Apps? All good questions at this point, but I'm not dwelling on that, and just, pardon the pun, powering on. Now from what I remember, Space Invaders essentially is a group of little aliens working their way slowly across and down the screen until they either reach the bottom or they're shot down by the player. The player being a little tank that can move left or right and shoot. The aliens move pretty slowly at first, but then they speed up as they get closer to the ground. Hmm, let's worry about that later. First, let's just see if we can get something that looks like the little aliens in the original game moving across the screen. We are going to need some kind of loop that will control the position and speed of the alien. Luckily, Power Apps provides a control for doing precisely that called, aptly enough, timer. The great thing about the timer control is that we can set it to repeat, which means we can use it to run our game loop. At this point, I don't have a clue how well this is going to run, but in theory it should work and that's good enough for me right now. After drawing a quick rendition of the Space Invaders alien character in Photoshop, hmm, that'll do, and placing it in the game via an image control, I create a timer to run the alien movement. I figure all I really need to do is increment the X value of the alien image control on each iteration of the loop. It's at this point that I get excited because I start believing that this might actually be possible. Okay, some more adjustments needed like the start and end points for the alien. I also need to set up the behaviour for when it reaches the end of the screen, the alien has to move closer to the bottom, which involves setting up a direction variable to track which way it's going, and some checking to see where it is at on the screen at any one time. I set the screen background to equal a cool Space Invaders background image I found on the internet, and now the game is really starting to take shape. Without getting carried away with delusions of grandeur, I realise we still don't have anything that is playable at this point, so the next logical step is to implement the player character. Again, just like with the alien, I draw up a quick player tank that resembles the one in the original game and place it on the screen using another image control. No time loop is needed, as the player will have complete control over the tank's movements, which means we need a control panel. I'm a little bummed out at this point, because I would have liked to have had the player controlled via the arrow keys, but right now I can't think of any way to do this out of the box. Of course someone's going to prove me wrong, which I really hope they do. Someone out there right now is thinking, challenge accepted. Okay, view abating aside, the control panel is pretty easy to do. Just a few icons to frame it, and some buttons to control the left and right movement. This is done via more variables that will correspond to the player image controls X value. A quick check shows that this works perfectly. Next up, let's add the ability for players to shoot. This will require a player shot icon and another timer control as the shot needs to move from the player up the screen until it is no longer visible or hits the alien. As with before, more variables required for checking if the player has pressed the fire button and to animate the shot if it is in progress. Another quick check and this works too. Now there's no point the player having the ability to shoot if they can't hit anything, so we need to implement some checking to see if the shot collides with the alien. More variables are used to check the player's shot against the alien position, allowing us to add behaviours for when the shot hits the target. 
It's here that I increment a player score variable and also set the player shot to false to allow for another shot to immediately take place. I also decide that unlike the original game, my invaders won't immediately die when hit. So I create another variable called alien1transparency, which stores the transparency value for the alien image. Each time the invader is hit, its transparency value is incremented slightly and only when it is completely invisible does the game register the alien as being killed. More on that later. It's then I remember the aliens can also shoot back and I think, oh boy, another timer loop required. Insert clip here of Han Solo saying, she'll hold together. Hear me baby, hold together. Okay, maybe I won't insert the clip, as I don't want to get copyright striked by Disney, but hopefully you get my drift. I'm now wondering, how many consecutive timer controls does it take to crash a power app? Let's hope we never find out the answer to that question. I create a shot icon and a timer control specifically for the alien shot, and this time I need to add some randomness to the loop, as we don't want the alien to be shooting in any kind of predictable manner. More variables and a quick random number generator sorts that out, and of course there needs to be a check to see if the alien shot fired collides with the player. If so, we need to end the game. Oh damn, we need an end game screen. I quickly knock up some graphics for the end game with the help of the internet and Photoshop, and set up the behaviours, again like with just about everything else, using variables to turn off the game loops and display the end game screen. I remember to go back and add the end game behavior to when the alien is killed by the player. It's now that I realize that there's definitely something not quite right. It dawns on me that the classic sounds from the original game are missing, and it is what I believe that truly made it memorable. Now I know that power-ups can trigger sounds via an audio control, but just like everything else before, now I'm not really sure if it's going to be the final straw to break the camel's back. I'm in this too deep now so I'm pushing on. So anyway, there are two sounds in particular that I want to implement. It's the alien walking sound and the player firing sound. Both to me iconically identify this is a Space Invaders game. So after listening to some of the original game sounds, it seems like there are four different alien walking sounds that are played. Again, another search on the internet provides me with four sound files that would do the trick. I add variables to allow for each file to be triggered by another action, and a trigger for each walk sound in the alien loop. Finally, I add another audio control that will play the player fired sound, and I trigger that sound in the same way from the player fired loop. And here's what I have so far. Alien shooting at me, which is good. <laughs> um, if I get hit by his shot, it's game over, which is working. Now, if I hit him, five times he should should also be game over which works that's great now there's one more condition that will end the game is that when the alien manages to invade without getting shot down by the player now it's going to take a little while to do. Another behavior I added was this player loop speeds up slightly every time he drops down a line, but it's still going to take ages to reach the bottom. So I'll just speed the video up here and hopefully I don't die in the process of um, him getting down there. So I'll have to try to avoid getting shot. <laughs> Just missed.
Yes. I've been invaded. I think for proof of concept, I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously, there's only one alien invading and the actual game had a big bank of them. But hey, for proving the concept that it's possible to build this in Power Apps, I think I've definitely done that. I have to say I'm pretty happy and surprised with how this turned out. I feel that it's only scratching the surface with what might be possible with using Power Apps to build games. I think at this point I'm going to stop developing and hand this over to you. I have uploaded the exported app project to GitHub to which I will link to in the description. Please feel free to download it and import it into your own Power Apps environment. I encourage you to tinker with it and basically tear it down and take what I've done to the next level. Send me your projects to chinodoesstuff at gmail.com and I'll feature the best of them in an upcoming Chino Does Stuff episode. Hit the like button if you like this video, comment something in the comments section below and of course subscribe if you want to stay up to date with everything that's happening on this channel. I thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video.